Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. I feel like a lot of us skincare influencers, skin influencers, we try so many products, we experiment with so many different types of products and ingredients and the latest greatest must have products that we have a very good idea of what's going to work for us and what doesn't. There are always those products that kind of catch us by surprise. Products I think I would have hated I tried them anyway, and I actually really, really like them. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a few brands I owe a bit of an apology to, because I was kind of rude about their products before I even tried them. And I actually really like them now. Let's start. Let's start with Ole, uh, o Ole Henriksen Lemonade Smoothing Scrub. I slated this product. I did like an anti-haul video, um, and I just talked about this product saying I don't want to try it. It seems very outdated to me. The marketing feels like a little bit early 2000s. Lemon scrub, two things people don't really want in their skincare put together. I was really very rude, and then I was sent this in PR, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> And when I receive products I don't want to use, I will either give them away, donate them, or use them on my body. Especially when it comes to scrubs, I, I keep them and I use them on my body. So I was using this in the shower, particularly on the top of my arms here, you know, we get like all that bumpy skin. Um, and I've been using it, I had been using it for about th two months, two, three months. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my arms felt so good. All the bumps had gone and the redness has, had faded a fair bit and I was like, I actually quite like this. I used it all up on my body. And then another company sent me like a box of all the products they sell in PR and again this was included in that box and I was like, oh great, more body scrub. But I decided to use it on my face and look, it's nice. It's actually quite nice. The sugar, as described, is so tiny, like it's it's powdery almost, and literally just vanishes as you start slowly massaging this into your skin. You don't you don't get a scrubbing from this, and I think this is the issue: is it's called a scrub. Um, exfoliant would have been fine. The smell also isn't horribly lemony or citrus. It's more sherbetty. It's more sweet, a little more artificial, which I prefer. As well as the sugar scrub, this has glycolic and lactic acid in to help exfoliate. There are some questionable ingredients like. Um, uh, linalol, citral, limonene, but in a wash of product, I don't, I don't care about that kind of stuff. It's absolutely fine. Overall, I actually only use this like once a week because my skin does react a little bit to physical scrubs, but this was so gentle and my skin just did look a lot healthier and more refined. I've actually used it all up, mainly on my body because it did make such a nice body scrub. Will I purchase again? Probably not because i got other body scrubs, but this isn't a bad product. At the end of the day, this is a nice product and I think scrubs are demonized, especially on like YouTube and TikTok skincare realm because we think St. Ives, right? When we think of scrub, Kylie Walnut scrub, we don't think of these finely milled kind of powdery kind of exfoliants that really when used correctly and gently really don't cause any harm on our skin and can give us an effective very gentle exfoliation. My skin looks great after using this so I'm sorry about that. Sorry, sorry I said that. Oh let's talk about Bubble. So Bubble is a newish skincare brand who got in touch with my manager I think last year before they launched to see if I wanted to work with them on some sponsored content. I took a look at the media pack and immediately declined receiving any products from them or work Working with them on a video because there were a lot of these buzzwords that I don't like that stood out to me. Clean, fragrance free, no harsh chemicals, no additives, fillers, fillers in skincare isn't a thing. All words for me that along with being fear mongering words and pretty anti-science, words that also go against my personal skincare philosophy, I think we should be leading with science rather than fear. And when you use these words, you're demonizing other products, you're demonizing other brands as having dirty or um, toxic ingredients when they don't. So like many other jobs, I turned it away, I turned it down. Simply based on the fact that our skincare philosophies were different. My manager said they were super nice about it, super understanding. They sent me a load of their products anyway. Now, did I think their products were going to be bad? Absolutely not. And are they bad? No, they're absolutely not. I actually really, really like one of their products in particular. I've only tried a couple. My skin in particular loves their hydrating moisturizer. It's so light, yet nourishing and moisturizing, and your skin feels so well protected. Um, I feel like with a lot of hydrating light moisturizers, 
it feels like it sinks into the skin so quick. Like there's nothing left on your skin after, like nothing, nothing really protecting it. And I can see myself as the weather starts to get warmer, using this very comfortably under layers and layers of sunscreen. It's actually a very nice, simple moisturizer. We have glycerin in here. We have aloe, aloe leaf juice, sorry. Very moisturizing and hydrating. As well as shea butter, avocado oil. So much more moisturizing ingredients, but still so light, especially for my oily skin. Well, combina oily here, combination here. And whilst I guess I don't agree with their formulation philosophy, their philosophy when it comes to ingredients. They have such an amazing stance on what skincare should mean to you, how you should be seeing skincare as self-care rather than striving for perfection. To me, that's an important message that should be shared. And for me, it would often overtake the the fact that I think the, this language is fear mongering. I think a much more important message is to be like, this is a brand who actually cares about the way you see skincare. They're not just trying to make money. Obviously they wanna make money, they're, they're a company, right? But there's so much more to them. They have great mental health advice. They have um, all these like hotlines you can phone. They, they, they're just so much more than a skincare brand. And whilst I don't regret not working with them, I've still got their products and I'm gonna enjoy using them. I feel like there are certain philosophies that are more important than how we agree or disagree on how people talk about ingredients, you know? Um, and I feel like, especially as this is kind of aimed at teenagers, I feel like their message about self-care is way more important than me worrying about them not using parabens, you know? So sorry about that, hun. <laughs> so. Oh, the next brand that needs an apology. <laughs> None of these brands want or need an apology from me, but Fourth Ray Beauty, in particular milks. I've talked about um, how I how I do like quite a few Fourth Ray Beauty br uh, products. They make products that you kind of look at, and you're like, oh, they're cute. Oh, they'll be nice to like display on a shelf. And recently on TikTok, I slated some of their milk serums because some of them are a little bit gimmicky and not really needed, like strawberry milk serum. Do they do a peach? They might do a peach, they might not, I don't know. Rose, you know, whatever whatever fruit or flower or food makes a nice color, I feel like that's how they decide on what their next milk is gonna be. But I actually really like the majority of their milks, despite what the, the flavor of the month is. And whilst they're not exactly groundbreaking, I do think they're really, really nice to use. I'm currently loving the Matcha Face Milk. It's nicely and lightly moisturizing. So it gives you that little added comfort, you know, that little added boost of moisturizer, especially with the colder weather when my skin's been a little bit chapped, especially on the cheeks. And it just overall makes your skin just look that little bit more radiant and awake. And we actually have some really nice ingredients. In the majority of these milks, we have um, squalane, a nice light moisturizing ingredient. Alongside rice bran oil, sodium hyaluronate, we have green tea in there. A lot of extracts that I'm like, uh. And I find this with the majority of their milks is that whilst they're not groundbreaking, they're nice. I, I don't think it matters what one you go for. <laughs> I think like, while some of them do promise certain different things, they're really just these nice light moisturizing serums. So yeah, I won't be slagging them off anymore. I actually quite like them. I'm enjoying For Free Beauty cleansers, lip masks. I love some of their other serums. I'm exploring this brand more and more and I feel like I um, judge them before I even try the majority of their products. They're, they're cute packaging, but with good effective products as well. So sorry about that For Free Beauty. Okay, so this is the C'est Moi um, cleanser. This is Liza Koshi's brand. I thought there was going to be so much more hype surrounding this brand and this launch of the skincare brand amongst the skincare community. And they're out there, I haven't seen anything. I've seen Hiram and Cassandra Bankson do a review. Hi, not Hiram Bankson, you know what I mean. Hiram and Cassandra um, do reviews and then maybe two other content creators. And then I've not seen anything other than Li Liza Koshy's own reveal. I've seen absolutely nothing about it. And I was really surprised. Um, I actually rushed to the website when she announced it and she had everything shipped from America because I thought this is gonna sell out. Like this is gonna do really, really well. I thought there'd be a buzz and there's not anything. I actually did a poll on my Instagram to see if anybody was interested in a brand review, but the poll came back something crazy, like 98% of my followers who range from 15 up to like 30 mainly just didn't, care. They're like, no, not bothered by it. So now all the products are sat in a box, not being prioritized to review or use because 
no one's interested in them. I grow through cleansers like crazy. I use them up so, so quick. So one day I just needed another cleanser. I quickly picked um, the, what is it? The Gentle Foaming Cleanser. I picked out of the box and just quickly used it in the shower. And I was really pleasantly surprised. This is such a nice cleanser. I feel like it's the type of cleanser that everyone's looking for nowadays. It's completely non-stripping. It's super light on the skin. Yes, it does foam up a little bit, but foaming doesn't always equate to drying. And this doesn't dry out in any way whatsoever. We have glycerin in here, which we usually see high up in gentle cleansers and supplying a bit of hydration as well. We have aloe, which is anti-inflammatory. We have a mild surfactant called sodium cocal glutamate. And we have apple fruit as well, which is actually really popular in K-beauty. It's often described as a gentle exfoliant, but I'm not really sure. I don't think there's a whole lot of research behind that. Other than that, it's a pretty basic cleanser and not in a bad way whatsoever. Whilst I don't think it's groundbreaking, I think this cleanser in particular deserves more attention for being the type of cleanser that people want free from everything basically, and very, very gentle. It might not be for me in summer when I need that bit more of a deeper clean, but in winter when my skin's feeling delicate, I don't want to be using anything too harsh. So this has been perfect throughout winter. This is another brand that I'm a little let down by, by the terminology and usage of the words like clean, non-toxic. And they got the EWG certified stamp, which to be honest, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> EWG are kind of like laughable in the skincare realm, especially the science side of skincare, because they're founded on misinformation. They spread misinformation like crazy. The EWG stamp is something I look out for, for all the wrong reasons, basically. So yeah, I feel like I shouldn't have cast them aside, c'est moi, as quick as I did, just because people weren't interested. I'm not too interested still in using the other products, but I feel like I'm a little bit more tempted to now I've had such a nice experience with the cleanser. But those are the brands that I know owe an apology to. I'm sorry, okay? This has taught me a lesson um, to try more products I think I'm gonna hate, <laughs> basically. But you know, we're all allowed to change our mind on skincare, right? Our skin changes, our opinions on certain ingredients changes. We are forever learning. If we don't learn, we don't grow. And maybe we just shouldn't be a judgmental little bitch. How about that? How about that? You can check out some more videos recommended for you. Just here and some general light entertainment here. And I'll see you over there.